Anthony Joshua told me to drop out. <laughs> he didn't tell me directly, mad. but he agreed. Sponsored by Jim Shaw. Yeah. Go James. Go James. Is that allowed to go? <laughs> how, how long did that take? When I found out that they wanted a long-term partnership, mm. I still didn't know that the definition would be athlete. Yeah. Um, so I, I was like... you texted me like, oh, it says I'm an athlete. Today on the podcast, somebody who is on Outreach's roster, I don't want to be horrible to the other people on our roster, but you're probably the fittest person on our roster. <laughs> Just from like a... Define fit. <laughs> James Birdwell. That's a great way to introduce well, James Well, thank you Birdwell. very much. How you doing? You're really good, thank you. Really excited to be on. First podcast ever. First ever. Wanted First to do time it for a where you time. can fuck up on mic. But oh. we can look after you, though. We can look after you. This is the first, like, time you've sat down and probably talked about yourself, right? Like this. You know what is weird? I have made my own podcasts and just never posted them. What, like on your phone at home? Like, or? the other day I was driving home from Loughborough. It's a two-hour drive. I set my camera up and filmed myself talking the whole time. That's sick, though. You should put that out. I know, I'm just... People would love it. My laptop's what out of storage. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 was, what... I've got to listen to this. What were some of the topics that you were talking about? Oh... It really varies. You've probably seen some of my content. Have, yeah, I've got yeah. a main page and a spam page. Right. So that's actually a really good segue <laughs> to that because I wanted to ask you, because we didn't know. We didn't know about this second page. That's the point. And then Fabiola was like, do you know James has got this like second page? And I was like, no. When I went on it the other day, I was like, what is this? <laughs> it's great. I have the most random mind. Yeah, yeah. And I just let it come out. Yeah, yeah. And it always comes out in the car after I've, or after or before I've been on a journey. Because I think about stuff on a journey while I'm singing some songs. I've also got a subsection of my mind thinking about toilet brushes, for example. <laughs> and I just let it come out. Hard I think, hitting content in this podcast. I know, I know. <laughs> Are you going to release it? I think you should release it. I will, I will divide it into little sections and include bits in future videos or re-record those yeah, yeah, yeah. while I'm not driving and waffling. What did you do it out of? I want to practice doing podcasting, or was it more just like I just need to waffle today? So I was, I listened to a lot of podcasts yeah, on my long drives. Can imagine, and I got bored of listening to podcasts. Yeah, so I was like, you know what? I'm F gonna, it. Gonna I'm gonna make my own one. <laughs> you should, and it turned out really. I really learned a lot about some, myself. I, I mean, maybe it's just because I'm not into fitness that much, but I don't know if there are many like really, really well followed fitness podcasts, right? I mean, what podcasts there's a lot in America. Yeah, all none in the UK. There you go. You'd be the first UK massive podcast. There we go. Sponsored by Jim Shaw. Yeah. Go James. <laughs> go James. Is that allowed to go? In? <laughs> how how long did that take? One, oh, one you. Oh God, you like, only know I was planning it. But I'm kidding. Got it tattooed on his head. <laughs> no, but for real, like I, you could do it with like some of the other Jim Shaw guys. Yeah, I would love to. Or Anna. Or Anna. <laughs> She's already got her own podcast, though. I don't know if she'd want to come on she mine. She invited you on? No, she does it on her own. On her own. Like, it's very yeah. much just, yeah. You could do that as well, though. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't film hers, interestingly. Mm. But I spoke to her about it. I was like, why don't you? She was just like, it would ruin her train of thought, worrying about what she looked like on camera. Yeah, that's and, fair. you know, she's looking all over the place while she's recording it in, on, the, on the microphone that she, you know, yeah. on camera, it would be weird. That's fair. And I, I think since I've started doing this podcast... It is funny. I, it was always going to be a video podcast. Mm -hmm. We obviously have audio as well, but it was always going to be video because I wanted to share it on socials. But there'll be times where I'm like talking to you now and I'll like look at that light and I'm like get so distracted from what I'm saying. It's a really good looking light. James, right. I've got to ask you a question. How do I get fit? How do I not look fat? In, can I get fit by summer? Absolutely. Absolutely. How? Well... Because that is the number one question that everybody has been asking me in the office, said, ask James how to get fit quick. Or is it not a, f a quick fix? It, it can be a quick fix, but it's not the best. Okay. I mean, if we're talking so realistically, mm. and this is, no one should follow this. Yeah. <laughs> but realistically, if you were to just really cut down on your food, yeah, yeah. you would lose the fat, but you'd also feel terrible. And then eventually you would binge and stuff like that. So yeah, that's not yeah. the best thing to do. Um, and I would never advise that. And uh I even noticed it the other week, actually last weekend. Yeah. I um, I completely lost my appetite and I went to the gym 
and felt terrible in the gym, of course. And yeah. then the next day, my muscles were so sore. Yeah. And that's just because I haven't fueled myself. Like there was no protein in me mm. to start re repairing yeah, yeah. the muscles. So I was literally in pain mm. because I was broken inside. And that stops you wanting to do it the next day, doesn't it? Like, I don't want to do this again. I don't want to feel yeah, like this. Absolutely. In terms of getting fit, it's always been overcomplicated. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, other than the little nitty gritty bits of nutrition, like balancing the right number of carbs, proteins, fats, and all the micronutrients, vitamins and stuff. Yeah. If you want to lose weight, you eat less food. Eat less food, move more. Yeah. Eat less food, move more. By moving more, you burn more calories. Yeah. By eating less, you consume less calories yeah and what you need to be in is what's called a calorie deficit which mm. is where you are eating less calories than you are burning is that right yeah, yeah eating no yeah eating less calories than you're burning so you're in this deficit over the weeks over the months yeah it's only only needs to be about 300 calories less than you're burning in a day and first of all what a lot of people get wrong is they think burning means only actively burning mm. but you are while we're sat here talking we're burning yeah, calories yeah. so if you if you were to go on a treadmill and burn 100 calories. That's not the only calories you're burning no. from that treadmill session. So active calories and... Because you have it on your watch, don't you? Like, mm -hmm. it's active calories and then just, like... Yeah. Underlying... Yeah. I don't even know what the other word is. It's funny because I used to be on... My my best friend's brother is a, is a tr personal trainer. And before my wedding, he put me on a training plan. Mm -hmm. And one of the first questions on the questionnaire each week was, like, how's your mental state? And I was like, why are you asking me this? But it's because he cut my calories down so much. Mm -hmm. He was like, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Like, are you feeling? I was like, no, oh, I've been a bit grouchy, actually. Mm -hmm. And you do. Yeah. It's, that's, it's, that's one of the first questions on my check-ins yeah. when I'm coaching because it can affect people's mental state. And you want to make sure, like, if you are mental and physical as well, mm. but it, you know, you are reducing some people's calories, therefore you're putting less energy into their body. And yeah. people obviously need energy through carbs and everything like that. So you look out for their mental state. And if they, you know, if they're getting really bad, eventually what's gonna happen is they're just gonna scrap it off and yeah, binge. Yeah. Yeah. And if you then go and eat a thousand calories worth of hobnobs, which is only 10 hobnobs. What? Yep. <laughs> You've just, if say you're in a calorie deficit of 300 calories yeah. every day. That's, oh, maths is not going to do me well here, man. Let's call it 100 calories. Yeah, so yeah. 700 calories, you are, you've eaten 700 calories less than you've burned in that week. Yeah. And then imagine you feel terrible and mm. you go and eat seven hobnobs. Yeah. You've done all that for nothing because you've just eaten those 700 funny, calories. funny, I was listening to um, David Laid on a podcast the other day. I forget who he was Chris on. Chris Williamson? Yeah, it might have been on that one. And he was saying some of the people with the biggest, like, the, sorry the worst relationship with food mm -hmm. are some of the best looking as in like fitness people that he knows yeah and i was going to say to you you obviously have this page i i see it sometimes and i'm kind of like fuck you james like why can you look like that and why can't and why can't i and i know why because you put in the work and i don't and i get that but do you sometimes ever feel like like do you feel a responsibility to explain why you look like that and why you you know you're going through this so that people don't see your page and get disheartened yeah that's really interesting actually i was very close to posting an instagram story this morning and i didn't for yeah. some reason but i probably will and because i get a lot of fake natty accusations natty yes. means natural yeah, 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 yeah. um where people think i'm taking steroids when yeah. i'm not and i'm gonna make a good in-depth youtube video about it and also split that into a lot of short form content but mm. Other than all the hard work and, yeah. you know, spending time in the kitchen and time at the dinner table trying to eat and stuff and spending time in the gym, of course, yeah. you have to, I have to be honest and put a lot of it down to genetics. Mm. Loads of different aspects as well in those genetics. It's not just, oh, I'm genetically really good at building muscle. Yeah. There's things like I store fat where I wear clothes. Like I store a bit of fat in my bum and legs mm. and luckily not in my arms. So like when people are going, uh, the other day I, I put on my Instagram story, I'm starting a cut where mm. I'm going to cut down my yeah, body yeah. fat before I go to LA. The secret's out. <laughs> I just said it. Um, and people were like, bro, you're already shredded. And I was like, mm. I look really shredded where you can see it. Yeah, yeah. And some people just naturally, not when you're genetically don't. Like some no. people store no fat on their abs and have really good abs yeah, but they'll yeah. have some fat around their arms and that's why you can't see their veins and stuff yeah. so people ask me that question 
Um, another one is just my insertions, which is where the muscles insert onto your skeleton. Right. Look good on camera. Sometimes if people meet me, it's less impressive. I mean, it's pretty, a lot it's of impressive games. I've got, I, got, I appreciate, got I appreciate that, but I, I certainly, the way the shadows hit me and stuff yeah, on yeah. camera. That is actually funny because I was talking to Josh about this, mm -hmm. which is I've met you obviously in real life, and then I see you in the gym, and it's a dark gym with nice lighting and whatever, and it does make a difference. Mm -hmm. like, of course, like even I can be in this certain light, and I'll be like, I look good, and then I walk into another room in my house, and I'm like, why am I so fat? Yeah, no. <laughs> you know what I mean though, but like it is true, and one of my um. One of Amy's sisters has a boyfriend, great guy, ripped, like so, but love, like great, great guy, doesn't like show off about it, just like very, he's into his rugby, really fit. But he says like, yeah, I've got really good genetics as well. Mm -hmm. And he he's the, one of those guys that he goes to the gym for like 20 minutes and just like smashes it. And that's all mm -hmm. he has to do because mm -hmm. he's just maintaining now. Mm -hmm. But then other people who aren't like that hear about it and they're like, where do I even begin? Because mm -hmm. you're, when you've got your clients, Where's like the starting point for you? Like, how do you start a plan for them? Well, immediately they have like a questionnaire that they fill right. out. So I learn as much as I can from questions yeah, yeah. and then I'll make their first plans. Mm. But then it is a case which some, some people struggle to, to understand. I have to slowly learn more and more about them yeah, yeah. as the weeks go on. Mm. So say I put together a meal plan, it's all portioned correctly mm. uh, for the right number of calories that I've calculated they need if mm. they want to gain weight or lose weight. I'll give them a meal plan and they'll say like, are you sure with these calories? And I'm like, listen, this is what I've calculated. It's, it's a very e easy calculation to do. You can do it on the internet. It mm. just takes into account your height, your activity yeah, yeah. levels, everything like that. But then over the next few weeks, I'm going to have to adjust it because mm. I have to learn about their metabolism, everything like that, yeah. how closely they even follow the meal plan. Yeah. A lot of people, people won't follow it. Yeah, mm. yeah, they won't follow it. And I'll be like, I, I can't now, I can't drop your calories any lower than this. I can't help properly if I'm yeah. not getting the truth, really. Yeah, if, if, like, if I'm now, if I've put your meal plan to as low as I can calorie-wise, you want to lose weight, and I've, mm. I've put it as low as I want to, mm. and they're still not losing weight, um, it's up to them that th yeah. I know they're not following the meal yeah, plan yeah. because I can't put you on like a thousand calories. Mm. That's a day. That's wrong. Yeah, yeah, you know that would make you lose weight very quickly, but that's wrong. Yeah, so yeah. I just sometimes think maybe they're not following the meal plans. But going back to your point about what David Laid said, yeah, about the unhealthy relationship with food, yeah, it's definitely correct. Do you it's, have a good relationship with food? So I, mentally, yes, yeah. but physically, I'm really bad at eating food. So the reason right. I look pretty shredded all the time is actually very frustrating to me. Obviously, for social media, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest, like being shredded on social media is better. If mm. I wanted to go on a bulk and put on mass, I genuinely think my views would drop because I gain more body fat and look less impressive, which is one of the issues with, social you know, media. social yeah. media. But That's wild, wild though, because it's, it's so true. One of the... I saw you do the the magic trick in the car the other day with your arm tensing and your veins popping out. That's the thing that gets the engagement. Mm -hmm. And, the and it's so frustrating because that took me 10 seconds to film. <laughs> <laughs> I will spend hours editing reels and, and everything. Yeah. Oh, not just that. It will take you months to bulk and no one gives a shit. Yeah. Or they just are like, oh, he's just kind of a fat boy now. Like, yeah. it's crazy to me. And that that's why I'm so interested to talk to you about the... The, the mental side mm -hmm. of what you do, not just the physical side of it, because I think it's quite easy to just be like, oh yeah, James is like a, you know, a fit guy, he's in the gym all the time, but it's got to fuck with you mentally. Like um, yeah, it, it can do. I don't really let it get to me too much. Yeah. I've sort of learned like- do you, do you engage with like comments and stuff like that? Because you said like the fake natty stuff, do you engage with that or do you just leave it? <laughs> I you okay. So here's a really interesting thing that I've been thinking about. I used to take it as a compliment. And I still do. Mm. It's a compliment to say, you think I really can't achieve this naturally. Like, this mm. is unattainable naturally. Yeah. So I appreciate that. I mean, I also have in the back of my mind, I know that this looks better on social media than it mm. does in real life. If people were to meet me, I still think they'd be impressed, but I think they'd be able to understand that, yeah. you know, I'm not pumping myself yeah, with steroids. Yeah. But recently it started to become less of a, I mean, it's still a compliment, but it gets to me mm. because an example is 
Matt Does Fitness. Have you ever heard of yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge YouTube channel, right? Yeah. yeah. One of the biggest controversies on the fitness mm. like industry. Everyone, not everyone, but loads of people thought he was also a fake natty. And by seeing all those comments on his page, I started to agree with them. And I then lost a little bit of respect for him. Lovely mm. guy. I've met him. Yeah. And But I started to think, oh... I kind of agree and I, I don't think he's natural and now he's lying to people. So obviously he's still a lovely guy, but I started to lose respect for that. Yeah. And then he did all these tests um, with yes, a guy called saw, More Plates, More yeah, Dates. Yeah, yeah, All really genuine, like, and he got all these tests. And, and was it, he the guy that, um, he's the guy that did the Liver King stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. He like, he like outed the Liver yeah. King. Yeah. yeah. So he basically is a professional outer. Yeah. yeah. And so he did it with Matt. Like, don't come for me. <laughs> no, come for me, no, please. No, 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 I really yeah, want no, right. to. Yeah, yeah, come for me. Um, and he did it with Matt Does Fitness, and yeah. it proved that he's natural, and everyone believes it now, and I believe it as well, and I gained respect. But what what worries me is for me is like I'm scared people are genuinely reading these comments yeah, yeah. and also losing respect. Mm. Um, and it's not good for social media or just my own. No, but I think it's good for you. yeah for you. But I think it what you're saying about making videos and content about it and explaining it because people are going li to listen there's always going to be those people that are just going to listen to what everybody else is saying you're mm -hmm. never going to stop that but you, if you educate people mm -hmm. and show them how you got to where you are or why you are the way you are then it will make it die down a bit mm -hmm. and also because also what might be happening for certain people is they start to get into the fitness culture they're like actually i don't want to start getting hate for people thinking I'm on steroids. I'm not going to keep doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you can try and stop people from being that way, hating against people who are in the fitness industry, you might even cause a few kids out there to keep going, mm -hmm. with, which mm -hmm. is quite a cool thing yeah. to think about. Yeah. It's really interesting. I got another point which just came to my mind. My friend Nathaniel, who's also yeah, 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 doing yeah. the same thing, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's also natural. He gets a lot of... Uh, mm. He used to. Now he doesn't because he does powerlifting in a tested federation. Right. Okay. So, you know, everyone knows he's natural. Mm. Um, he's just incredibly strong, yeah. been working for years and also has the genetics. Mm. But one point he said one time, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, is like he kind of somewhat agrees with... Doesn't agree, but like... Misses the days where it people didn't speak about if they were on steroids. Because mm. a lot of the time now people will speak about mm. it. And it's really influencing 15, 16, 17 year olds to, to start. To do it. Oh, there's so many kids starting making jokes about when it. When I grew up, like anybody who was on any kind of steroid or testosterone. And we had people, because I used to play rugby and like people would do it. It was so taboo. Like mm -hmm. and to, to the point where like no one would do it. So mm -hmm. you're saying now it's becoming more of like a... Mm -hmm. let's do it kind of thing bro the influence is nuts sometimes it gets to me like I have l spent five minutes maximum researching it after seeing a video on TikTok like it does get to me and it definitely gets to more people that are even more easily influenced you can see why like even like I get, I'm not saying that I would never do it or I would do it but I can see why athletes end up doing it to try and perform against the next person especially like in sports like cycling where everybody i think it was like you know <laughs> you know lance armstrong got done for mm. um the blood doping yeah i think you had to go down to like this might be completely wrong but you had to go down to like the 20th person in that those races to actually find somebody who was natural and didn't do it everyone's on it and so they? i can see why people especially in like the nfl and stuff like that and if you're saying it in your industry, you can definitely see why, especially when how when people see how lucrative this industry can now mm -hmm. be. It can now be, it's being a fitness influencer can earn you a shitload of money. Yeah. You're like, well, fuck it, I'll just go on. Mm -hmm. That's a question then. Do you think that fitness influencers should get tested and there should be regulation to stop this? Because it is dangerous. <sighs> Short answer, probably no. Mm. I mean, yeah, mm. but... It, that's it's never going to be able to happen never like that, you know and it's it's people's choice i know that they're yeah. i don't even know what the laws are on them because like be illegal, there are right? people yeah but there are people that are open about it so why aren't they in prison do you know what i mean so i don't understand i it. think it's like it's like drugs like if you were like oh i just i did some drugs at the weekend mm -hmm. you can't get arrested for that mm -hmm. but if you were found with those i'm sure if those people with steroids got found with them they would get arrested okay true probably I don't, yeah I don't know. Well, you know, it's it's a really difficult... 
that would be a really difficult thing to regulate. Very hard, yeah, a very hard thing to police. But mm -hmm. like you say, it is creating an environment where one, people are wanting to do it because they want to have the fame and notoriety and the following and look the way they, they'll look. But two, it's it's affecting younger people thinking this might be the only way for me to get there. Mm -hmm. Which why you educating people on saying no, you can get there like this mm. is important. Yeah. It should be like ad disclosure. Yeah. If you're gonna be on steroids, maybe you need to disclose it. Yeah. Maybe that's what it should be. Yeah. I actually had a little bit of beef with someone about it. I'm not gonna name any names on the podcast, but I get all these fake natty accusations. Right. He jumped on. Calling yeah. you fake natty. No, so we know no no no. He jumped on uh jumped on is a term for like starting steroids. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So um, not in the nat the community. And but he still had Natty in his bio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh and it took him a while to take it out. Um right. and it just it was getting under my skin because number one, he's my one of my competition. Yeah. And number two, you know, if I'm getting all these accusations yeah, yeah. and you're not as much, but you're on it and you're, you know, you're trying to because I'd say our physique's quite similar. I just made a little joke in one of my videos um mentioning him and he came at me in my dms on my birthday and i was like bro oh. let me get back to you after my birthday meal's finished yeah, and he yeah. came at me he was like why are you doing this why are you saying it? i was like would well, you want me to hide it for you yeah do you want me to you know keep lying help you lie to your your yeah. fans the people that are trusting you the people that are you know spending money on you buying all your workout plans saying so it's he, all natural he come out now and said that he's he's had to he's because had to. it got so visible like, because somebody else called him out? Uh, well, everyone started calling him out, and then it also just became too obvious that he's suddenly gone from his progression going like this to then that. Oh, right. You know exactly. I mean? big... Yeah. So and he was, he, was, he was on a cut, gaining strength. That doesn't happen. What, what are, like, the signs of somebody that's, bar, like, just, you know, massively quick um, increase in muscle mass? What are the other signs of somebody that might be on steroids? It's really difficult because there's signs, but they can also happen naturally. Mm. So one sign is gyno, which happens to your like nipples. It, it happens to a lot of people naturally, like literally like one in two men get it in puberty where the, your nipples puff up because your right. hormones are all imbalanced yeah, yeah, yeah. and your estrogen levels are high relative to the yeah. others. So you literally start growing breast tissue. And that happens a lot. If you're prone to that, that will happen yeah. if you were to start taking steroids. But it's really difficult to say that because I actually had that problem at puberty and have it right now because my hormones are a little bit messed up yeah. because of, I think it's due to my lifestyle and environment. Like I'm just, I don't know. I don't really know. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely one thing. Another thing is spots, like higher testosterone yeah. is basically like you're hitting well, puberty you've got no again. Spots, so Thank, well, I've got one in the middle there. I might have to didn't hide have to, that. Didn't have to point it out. Josh, you know how to edit that yeah, out. Yeah, what, yeah, in the video, he'll get yeah. it out. He'll get it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and another one is, I, I, I don't really know how accurate it is, but like mm. gen, generally people that are on steroids, like you get a lot traps. of traps and yeah. thick neck and muscles that wouldn't really get big yeah um and yeah what's the difference between like steroids like anabolic steroids and just testosterone well so steroids have like i consider testosterone as a steroid obviously testosterone yeah. is just a hormone but yeah, it, yeah. testosterone itself is pretty anabolic like okay um that's the that's not the growth hormone because growth hormone is growth hormone, but that mm. testosterone stimulates, you know, all the, that growth. Yeah. You know, um, steroids obviously have other chemicals in that do other stuff. I, I actually haven't researched you, too much. But into do it. you think it's because I've got um, some friends that have been on testosterone, mm -hmm. not steroids. And I always fear that, like, if you start putting testosterone in your body, and this is like the stupidest bro science ever, but if you start putting testosterone in your body, it's going to be way harder for you to produce it yourself when you're old that's right? correct yeah so then you're fucking yourself yeah forever. that's correct you have to your your natural testosterone like production drops will drop so physically Every, yeah yeah so you gotta take it forever then yeah basically. unless you come off it in the really correct way i'm not too sure how you do that very very slow yeah probably. um but yeah you are 
you do need to stay on it for the rest of your life. Uh, uh, it wouldn't have to be the the same level. If you're if you're yeah. taking testosterone to gain muscle, yeah. you take more than you're currently producing. It's not like testosterone replacement therapy that yeah. people generally do when they get older anyway because their natural testosterone yeah, yeah, yeah. drops. It's very prevalent in America. Like a lot mm. of like fifty year old men will will get put through yeah. it. Yeah. So you'd have to be on that yeah. replacement therapy probably for the rest of your life. But it wouldn't have to be high. It would just have to be like a natural it's so level. so dangerous, man, just to get a bit fit when you're younger. Mm -hmm. Take me back to, we were talking before the podcast about your training plan. Because I think people are quite interested to see, because they obviously see you in the gym all day, every day. But like you said, sometimes you're in the gym, but you're sharing that content later. So it looks like maybe you're in the gym more. Mm -hmm. How much do you gym? What's your like program like right now? Because I can imagine it changes. Yeah, so I'm... I'm very all over the place right now right. and probably will be for a long time because the the way yeah. I go to the gym kind of represents my mind like I wing it a lot. Yeah. Um, sometimes I follow my own plans that I just quickly whip up in my yeah. bedroom. I like to spend, if I, let's say I'm not filming anything and I'm going on my own, no distraction, yeah. I'll only really spend an hour and 20 minutes maximum. Mm. Um, I really enjoy like 40 minute sessions the most, just mm. get it done in and out because they don't actually need to be much longer than 50 and minutes. And is it like an intense session where like you're not taking many breaks or is it just, just 40 minutes of like weights? So it definitely varies. Like if I was going in to train a movement for strength, mm. you should take breaks to yeah. allow everything to replenish yeah, yeah. so that you can go again next yeah. set and have pretty much, you know, 90, 95% of the strength you had in the previous one. Mm. Uh, that's why powerlifters who are always just training for strength will mm. take a good five minute break, yeah. have some sweets and snacks in between, everything like that. Um, but I like to vary between training for strength and training for bodybuilding, like mm. muscle growth yeah, and yeah. just training for fun um, throughout my week. Like mm. it's not like I'll do one week strength, one week um, the other. I'll yeah, do, yeah, yeah. you know, one day strength, one day normal. Uh, and the bodybuilding style workouts generally is only like a two to three minute rest. And I find them yeah. the most fun because I don't like sitting around. Yeah, you get bored. So, yeah, so. Do you, I, do you have like a certain, because I remember like with the plans that I used to get sent, they would be like, this is a chest day, this is a back day. Like, mm -hmm. do you have those kind of things or do you mm -hmm. split it up into different concepts? No, so I generally follow what yeah. you said. Like, it, I generally follow push-pull legs. So right. one yeah. day pushing, yeah. chest, triceps, a little bit of shoulders. Mm. One day pulling, so back, biceps, rear delts, rear, like the back of your shoulders, mm. um, and then legs. And then I'll generally do another just a day after that. After I've done those first three days, I'll do a day mm. after that where I kind of just hit everything I missed a little bit. Mm. So a lot of people just do push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, rest, push, pull, legs, push, pull, mm. legs, rest. I'll do push, pull, legs, random day, rest, mm. push, pull, legs, random day, rest. I bet that random day is the most fun day. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. a lot of the time because it, it, a lot of the time it ends up being shoulders, arms and abs. Yeah. Which are, first of all, I really like the effects of a shoulder workout yeah, the yeah. shoulder pump is really nice because you know everything else looks normal but your shoulders are just massive so mm. it, if, it, when you look in the mirror it looks like you're on steroids <laughs> um, and arms is always fun to train it's always nice to have an arm pump but abs on the other hand hate it don't like doing abs. I hate it but I've recently found the ab roller is an exercise I, I like doing you, I saw you doing that on your, on your mm -hmm. TikTok yeah and that's the only one I really like doing because it's Less an of old a... school, um, just like contraption. Mm -hmm. Like they used to have it in like in the like nineteen seventies American like yeah. workout videos. It's a wheel with two handles. Yeah, it's mad. But I like it a lot more because a lot of people have been exposed to like ab circuits mm. and selling ab circuit plans, ab circuit YouTube videos, everything like that. You don't have to do a circuit to train your abs. Your abs are a normal muscle. You can train it's them like same. anything. Yeah. You know, it's you, imagine doing a leg circuit. Sounds fun for ten minutes it's until you throw up. Yeah, yeah. Like that's such a good point, man. Like I, I've, I mean, I, I've never really thought of it like that. But mm. that is what has been sold yeah. to people is that you should do like a fifteen-minute ab burn. Yeah, and where that's come from is the old tale of you can spot reduce fat. 
where people think, mm. oh, by doing a circuit because it's high intensity, I'll be losing fat on my abs. You can't choose where you lose your fat. Yeah. If I were to work out my abs yeah, like yeah, really yeah. intensely, I'm not going to lose any more fat on my abs than anywhere else on my body. You just naturally lose it where your genetics say you're going to lose it by being in that calorie deficit. Obviously, by doing a circuit and having this really high intensity training, you're probably going to be mm. burning a lot more calories. But for the for the sake of maybe 100 calories burned and the pain that you're in is unsustainable you don't want to do it and you don't necessarily train your abs as well as you could because you're not giving them the rest so you're just performing a movement more way of doing it yeah then, really. exactly so that's why i like the ab roller because i'll just do a set like a normal you've exercise changed my, uh, you've changed my mind on that then mm -hmm. really and it's learned. less painful it's less of yeah. a burn do you know what i mean yeah yeah no definitely because that, that's abs is always an afterthought for me mm -hmm. <laughs> i think it's for most people right yeah because like, cause that's the thing with abs as well. Unless you've got your diet right, mm. you're not going to see them. You're not going to see them anyway. No. What is your relationship with food like then right now? Like, do you meal prep? Do you just kind of like eat clean? Like, what is it? Right now I am cooking from scratch every time. Really? Uh, it's quite boring. Most yeah. of the time it's just chicken, rice and a little bit of veg. Are you Are you like strict on it? I'm not strict on it like that. I just... I'm not actually the best cook, so I can't be bothered to do the rest. Yeah, you're, and still, it, you're still a student, really. Yeah, it suffices. I'm still living in a student house. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. have the nicest kitchen. Um, in my head as well, I've got a really strange... Like, I associate my weekly shop mm. with still being a student. So yeah. I don't want to spend a lot on food. Yeah, I'll yeah. happily spend loads on camera gear. <laughs> like, I just bought a drone. It's coming today. I'm really excited. <laughs> Click of a button. Josh, but... Mate. I don't want to spend more than thirty-five pounds in Tesco's because I'm still in my mind when I go to that Tesco's, which was wow. the Tesco's I did as I went last year when I was a student. Yeah, I didn't have that much money last year, so I don't want to. That's spend crazy more. though. Like, so I still eat. Simple. I would think that the majority of your money would be going on food. It should. Yeah, it should, but it doesn't. <laughs> and I'm, my, I'm actively making my life more difficult by just still having that mindset. But I'll hopefully get out of that once I move out. I get, yeah, maybe. So well, how, how has it been, because obviously for anybody that doesn't know, you went to Loughborough, mm -hmm. you were there for a year, mm -hmm. and then now you've taken a sabbatical, mm -hmm. they call it that. What's it like living around students while trying to, one, one, just be a content creator, which is just completely different to anything else anybody else would be doing there, but two, being a fitness content creator mm -hmm. where, it's all about nutrition. It's all about going to the gym and they're probably out partying half the week. So luckily my house are in some ways, some people might describe it as a little bit boring. They don't go out. Do um, you have Sam? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So he's he's a fitness influencer. Yeah, so it's it's two fitness kind of influencers thing, yeah. and then four uni students. Right. It's lovely, it's fun, like being around those people. Um, in terms of like the social media career and my mindset and my even gym mindset mm. is not the best. Mm. Uh, and I've got loads of different reasons for that. First of all is one that's been getting to me lately is my whole workflow, my work-life balance mm. is terrible. And one of the reasons is because I don't like taking time off mm. as we spoke about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason I, the, the reason I've, I've realized the reason I don't like taking time off is because the time off doesn't feel productive mm. because I'm in that house and that's yeah. not their fault it's just my association mm. you know what I mean if they if we were to all go and chill and do something I'd feel guilty for not you know yeah. making videos or posting if I were to be living alone I reckon my time off would be better spent because I'd still be doing stuff for me and mm. you know taking that physical time off of editing or filming but it would still feel more productive because I would be you know distractionless do you think resting. you'd be mentally a little bit i don't know man like do you think mentally it's quite good for you to have those distractions sometimes because if not you could get obsessed i mean you are obsessed obviously with what you do and i say obsessed in a good way mm. like i think i hate when people are like oh my god you're obsessed with this it's like well no i just care about it so i say it in a good way but do you think it's quite good to have those distractions of living with people that because like i i was listening to a podcast with um an england rugby player called freddie stewart He's at, I think he's at Loughborough. Okay, he might be at Loughborough, him. but um, he yeah he plays for England. And he still lives in like the u his uni house. He was saying it's quite a good thing because I go back and it distracts me from everything. Do you ever find it like a, a positive? 
recently no but yeah. previously yes yeah, so yeah. You're at that tipping point now, aren't you? You're like, let me free now. I'm like, let bro, I want it. Like, yeah, I yeah, really, yeah, yeah. I want to do everything to yeah. get it. Like, so right now I'm struggling with it. Previously, I enjoyed it more. Um, I'm saying like two months ago, mm. because I had more of a mindset of like nil from the in-betweeners. You know how he was, he's just a bit simple. He just enjoys life. He doesn't worry about his problems. He doesn't yeah, think yeah. about them. So by not thinking about them, I actively felt like I had less problems. Yeah. And also didn't think so much about, oh, I need to be doing this, that, and that. So when I would be in the uni house, I could chill with them and I'd be fine, mm. you know, watch some Netflix. We, luckily in our house, we've all got smart TVs in our room. Fuji <laughs> student house. Yeah, I, I know. I had a sink and I was like, Sam, <laughs> I'm my own toilet. No, well, I also have my own toilet, actually. Mm. Not in my room, but there's two toilets upstairs. One was just designated. It's a nice, me. nice student house by the sounds of things. Oh, uh, it was to begin with. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not so much no, anymore. It's not nice. But um, do they drink? Like, what about the partying side of things? Do you drink? I used to. I'm not mm. a non-drinker. Right. I don't really anymore, just because. One, I kind of feel. I I do kind of feel weird going out. Mm. Um, like in Loughborough, especially because I do get recognised mm. in the club. Um, most of the time, it's good. But um, I do have some sort of social anxiety, like I'm waiting in the queue and I'm thinking about who's looking at me. Mm. And I, so I, it's not, it's 90% of the time, it's not an enjoyable experience at all. And I regret going out mm. and I have the worst Love anxiety ever. Place as well, isn't it? Like yeah. I had a few, few friends that went there and there's like three clubs that you can go to. Yeah. And, like it's tiny. Yeah. Whereas, so moving to LA, well, going to LA. Mm-hmm that'll be a lot more chill for you. You'll be able to like spread your wings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I'm excited because it's going to be a big change in terms of my environment. Right now being in Loughborough, this is not um, anything about any of the other people there, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it feels like big fish in small pond. Mm. Whereas when I go to LA, I'm going to be the you're smallest small fish thing. in a massive not pond. Not small, but because you're going with a, a you know, a plethora of content and yeah. following but yeah you're gonna be yeah another creator yeah. but it's just that thing i need i feel like i really need to just go up a Take bit more now. next step yeah because you know if i were to stay there for another year i mm. you know comfort is what's that phrase comfort is the enemy of progress yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, like something like that definitely how agree. old are you though 21 right you need just to chill, chill bro you need to chill real quick because <laughs> you, you've got I, I love where you're at. Like you, you've got, I can feel it in you when I talk to you at the moment. You're like, I've, I want this. I want to mm. get it. But you've also got time. But I like that you've got, the thing is it's good because you've got the plan in place. Like you know what you, what, what you want to do. Mm. But also you've got to remember that like you don't need to achieve it tomorrow. Yeah. Like, yeah. But it's you want a personal it. battle. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about, um, let's talk about Gymshark. Mm-hmm. You're obviously wearing it. I called it. I said he'd turn up in a Gymshark top or hoodie. Mm -hmm. And you turned up in full kit by yep. the look of it. Full kit. Representing. When you were growing up mm. and you were like, you know, wanting to get into the fitness industry, I can imagine given your age, Gymshark was like the brand. Mm. Like everybody wanted to be part of, you know, wanted to be a Gymshark athlete. What was it like when you first started working, when when you found out that Gymshark wanted to even work with you, what was that moment like? So when I first found out, we'll, we'll go back to, I think it was March or something, when mm. I first got invited to the lifting club. Yeah. So that was yeah. way before I became an athlete. Yeah. In I think it was March and then I became an athlete in November. When I first got invited with a friend called Joel, um, we were both like, this is nuts. What yeah. if we walk out here, athletes, or whatever? Um, and it was amazing. They showed us around, really welcoming and everything, and made a video. Um, and I was thinking, oh, maybe we'll become athletes. Mm. Um, and we were constantly talking about it. And we obviously didn't uh, for a while. And, you know, it kind of slipped to the back of my mind. Mm. I got, I received a few packages, but then I thought, oh, that was just going to be it. Because... Yeah. And I, I always doubted myself with it because I, I remember saying this to Nathaniel. I've actually got it on video somewhere. So Nathaniel's been an athlete for mm. a good two years now or something since lockdown. I was like, I really wanted to be an athlete. But I said to him, like, bro, you're special. I understand why you're an athlete. Like, his strength was crazy. Like, mm. 300 kilo deadlift at, I think, the age of 17 
just nuts. And I was yeah. like, you're special. And Anna, she's special. Mm. And I was like, I'm not. <laughs> you know, I had that self-doubt. And it's fucking wild to hear you say now because people look at your page and go, we know why he's a Gymshark athlete because he's special. <sighs> that is true, though. That's what people see when they look at your page now. They know instantly when you see that you are a Gymshark athlete, people go, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I appreciate that. It is, though. I still struggle to believe it. I know, you guys can tell by just saying that to you. You're still like, Ugh. Yeah, uh, it's, it is strange, but yeah. like, yeah, when I found out that they wanted a long-term partnership, mm. I still didn't know that the definition would be athlete. Yeah. Um, so I, I was like... you texting me like, oh, it says I'm an athlete. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was... Like, uh, um, do you know what's so funny? I was in the car, so Sam yeah. was texting you from from <laughs> my phone, and I was I was literally driving, shaking in the steering wheel. I was like, ask him, ask, ask him if he means athlete. Ask him. And I actually got Sam to take a photo of me in that moment, because mm. once I found out, I was like, bro, I want you... Can you, like, yeah. just take a photo of me? The photo was nothing. I was literally yeah, like yeah, that, but I just want to remember that. Um, and it's so funny. When I got out of the car, I was so excited. I, like grabbed I, I was borrowing Sam's rucksack for the day I grabbed his rucksack out and the, the bottom clip was undone of one of the handles yeah. so my brand new MacBook Pro that I just bought no yeah massive oh dent in the corner oh my god um, but I was like this is so great because I'm forever going to remember this dent as being the day I found out I was becoming a gym shop <laughs> that athlete. is half glass full yeah. thinking that I know so I wanted to get it repaired and I was like oh I didn't actually like I had a five second thought okay it's in a 30 day warranty does that even yeah, yeah. can I get it repair because obviously it was my fault that I damaged yeah. it I was like you know what the, the laptop still works so completely fine I want to keep that dent yeah. so I remember it um, but there was a massive anticlimax, and it was probably the, the, the disbelief like I didn't mm. it didn't set in for months and still kind of hasn't it's, I think with those kind of things, it's like, what does it at Gymshark, I will say this, have created the, one of the best communities mm. in the world from yeah. any brand that I've ever seen. Like the way they do stuff, like I'm actually going to speak to Callum soon on the podcast. And they've just created this 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 buy-in of a family and a, just like an organization and yeah, a community. But when people become brand ambassadors, usually... Mm it's kind of like, what does that mean? Mm. Like, what does that actually mean? And until you go to the events and the lifting clubs and, you know, the, the thing you did in Manchester a few weeks ago, a few months ago, whenever it once was, it is kind of like, what does it mean? Mm. So what's it? what has it been like over the first year of mm. being an athlete? So I've only been an athlete for like six months, seven, eight. Wait, really? November. November 2022. I thought it was earlier than that. No. So May was when I got it. Um, so that's why I probably think it's a whole year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe it was when I got when you first had contact with them around then, probably. Well, fuck, well then, dude, then you've done a lot in six months. Mm, then it's with been them. jam packed. It and has an unreal experience. You've done because you've done multiple shoots. You've done multiple big lifting events. Mm -hmm. Been part of some of the big campaigns. Part of like the London launch. Like yeah, and that was crazy because that yeah. was became a Gymshark athlete. Signed the contract on the train towards. Birmingham where that's what it was because we were trying to get the contract done by the time you got there because I was like you can't go if we haven't got the contract sorted so, yeah so that's what it was I yeah. signed the contract on the train to Birmingham to and then that same night I met David yes, Lade Sawyer exactly. Brandon Starr two days later we head down to London yeah. for the store opening yeah, so yeah. my first week as a Gymshark athlete was the best week of my life confidently like yeah. I became an athlete that's actually quite rare to, to to sign with a brand and go through that in the first week or so because usually you sign and then two months later you actually do an activation or something mm. that was just you know coincidence really yeah. and it was great coincidence crazy like it set the bar high really That's high why you've got this let's go now because you've been around those people yeah how important has that been like being around people like David David is a ridiculous inspiration mm. in the fact that he's still so very much himself mm. so when i spend time with him like david's a little nerd a little <laughs> bit so he loves the best to, people are man oh uh, he's are. so passionate about everything he does and it definitely annoys some people yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um 
I mean, it's crazy. First of all, it's still weird to say that I'm friends with David Lade because yeah. he was the person that really mm. got me into it. I remember one, the first video I watched of him was nothing to do with fitness because it was before yeah. I was into fitness. I watched yeah. a video of him. It was a skincare. <laughs> there, was a, there was a thing about skincare brush. Mm. Um, and because I was getting some spots around yeah. like f 15 years old. And then I subscribed to him and started following his journey. And then, you know, started my own journey. And obviously mm. I had loads of other influences, mm. um, like, you know, personal ones, my strength and conditioning coach at school. Once I started mm. going to the gym that my school had, um, you know, he really helped me learn and, you know, continue to get better and better. But being around those types of people is similar to big fish, small pond, or small, mm. small fish, big pond. Yeah. Like, you know, you are, pushed without realizing to becoming mm. like them and that's why surrounding yourself with people that that's you want to so be key, like is man. so well you end up like what your friends are like don't you that's mm. what they always say that you've got to put yourself in the right friendship group because and i I don't, I don't like this saying because it makes it all about money but if like they say that if all your friends if you're if you're friends with six millionaires you'll be the seventh millionaire mm. i don't like that saying because it's about money but it's true like if you put yourself around the average Joe in a gym, you're going to be happy with what you look like now for the rest of your life. But that's why I love that you wanting to do things like go to LA and push yourself because that will make you improve. Yeah. What What's it? What, what do you think the the whole decision? Because David's now the creative director, director of right? lifting. Yeah. Which is amazing because for a long period of time, that's what Gymshark was about. Mm -hmm. And then they and very rightly so, made it a lot more inclusive for a lot mm -hmm. more body types, for yeah. a lot of different individuals. But they did kind of lose the whole, we're a you know, fitness and lifting yeah. brand yeah. for a little bit. How do you think that's changed the direction of the company making him the creative director of lifting? Very directly, like just because David has a lot of fanboys. Mm. Instantly, loads of people found that respect for Gymshark again. Yeah. Uh, and also that I've noticed, like in say TikTok comments mm. instantly are saying like, well done to David for doing this, this and this. I, I, but this was before David even came on. So there's a lot yeah. of stuff that, you know, it's obviously not all David. Yeah. A lot of stuff that the whole team have been working on for months and months. Mm. Um, but everyone is just saying, oh yeah, since David came back, it's, you know, yeah. come to life again. Um, so it's like putting a face to the brand again, mm. you know? Which is and, maybe what they lost for a little bit. Mm, yeah. And mm. especially, well, because I know that maybe even David didn't want to be too involved mm. with some of the stuff. I personally, and this is way before I even worked with Gymshark, like when I would see all the inclusivity, like I never had a problem with it, mm. you know? Because in my head, putting all these different sizes of people, shapes, whatever, mm. in clothes is only encouraging people the the same people that feel like they shouldn't be in the gym yeah to get into that clothes to yeah, yeah. say you can wear that clothing and yeah. get in the gym so i never had a problem with it but i know that loads of people that have that le less mature mindset mm. did have a problem with it and people mm. just don't like change yeah. so i'm hoping that they keep keep that all all of that inclusivity but one thing that they did lose was the fact that you know mm. they just can, kind of forgot about the lifting because yeah. it, you know it was working the getting loads of different people yeah. into all their different clothes. Yeah. Well, it helps them scale as a business. Absolutely. But, you know, don't forget your roots. So <laughs> don't, do forget, both. don't forget the muscly boys like mm -hmm. you. <laughs> what, so, um, so you want to move to LA or you want to go to LA? I w I'm going to LA for a month. I wouldn't say I want to move to LA. Test it. Test yeah. the waters. Test the waters. I'd love to just move to the US. What are you hoping to find over there? that maybe you don't have here? That's a really good question. Deep question. It's a really good question. You, you definitely didn't think about before you booked your flight. You would have thought. Yeah, so <laughs> the, the first, the purpose of going to LA wasn't to see what it would be like to live there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going with three other Gymshark athletes. Got you, right. From, one's from Australia, Brandon mm. Starr, and, and the oh, Fagan yeah, yeah. twins from, yeah. from the US. I don't even know where they're from, but they're mm. like professional skiers, yeah, yeah, yeah. so somewhere mountainous. Um, and we just want to get a month, like just do content, content, mm. content, content, collabs everywhere. Like mm. LA is the spot, isn't it? Yeah, really. Yeah. So we just, we've, we've got two Airbnbs 
one for the first 11 days, one for the second like 15 days with a mm. pool and stuff mm. and we just really want to get loads of good content i'm bringing my friends sam and will they're nice. all bringing a couple of friends and it's just going to be a vibe and we're all going to be pushing loads of content mm. and it's just going to be really fun and then i came in to think okay i can also analyze do i want to live here mm. what would it be like what i would get there over being in the uk is I don't know. The sun, Unknown to me. The sun and the weather. The sun and the weather, and I suppose the environment. When I I went to New York last um, last summer, mm. and it was crazy to see that there were people in the streets with ring lights dancing <laughs> and doing all this. And I'm not saying that that's really cool, but what I got from that is over there. I feel like they're five years ahead in terms of the yeah. internet and social media, yeah, yeah, yeah. and also ahead in terms of people don't care what other people are doing no. too much you've got you know random people dancing in the streets you've got mm. those not you've got those paparazzi that come over and take photos mm. of you and try and sell you the photo yeah. like everyone's on their own grind yeah, yeah, yeah. especially it's in very new york hustle culture that i used to live there i lived there for a year and mm. it was in florida and it wasn't the place to hustle i, I mm. moved there when i was 21 and it was not the place to go when you were 21 it was really? like a retirement village yeah i went to florida as well and like but the one thing I will say is everybody is encouraged to hustle over there. Mm -hmm. there's a, in the UK, there's a, um, a saying like a tall poppy syndrome. Like the tall poppy gets cut down, basically. So if you're trying to do well in the UK, people try and cut you down, try and cancel you. They don't want you to do as well. I'm not saying that that's the case for everybody in the UK, but it definitely is a thing. Mm -hmm. It's like stay in your lane, like chill out a little bit. Yeah. In the US, everybody's like, what are you doing next? Like, what are you trying to achieve? Yeah. And that, if that's where you're at in your life now, I think that's what you'll probably get out of it. Yeah. Because the one thing you won't be able to do there is slow down. Yeah. Because everybody around you will be mm -hmm. like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And your brain's going to go, I've got to keep doing this now. I don't know whether that's a good thing or not for me. Well, I don't know. But it, well, when you're <laughs> in your life and your career, like you've got no commitments from like a, like you don't have a baby like me or a mortgage or stuff like that. Like you can do what you want. Yeah. So why not do it now? And testing is a great, a great way of doing it. You just got to be careful on those trips that you don't get sold the dream because you're on this amazing trip for three weeks and two amazing airbnbs with a pool and all your friends like what's it really like to live there when like they're not there yeah that's what you've got to go and yeah. test absolutely absolutely but i don't know i'm just i'm also someone that doesn't get excited for things very much until like the day before like mm -hmm. i remember when i was moving to university i literally didn't care until until the morning when i started packing in the morning it's a good thing though you live in the moment yeah yeah i suppose so yeah um but this one's interesting because i'm like you know it's in two weeks and i'm excited when are you going june 4th for the whole of june basically yeah I fourth think. to like the 28th That'll be good. It's Pride Month as well, so I bet in LA they'll be doing some really cool shit for Pride really? as well. Yeah, like big, big like carnivals and stuff like that. So it'll be fun. Mm. The weather will be good. Yeah, I actually have no clue what to expect of LA. You've I've never, never really. Been? No. Do you know where you're staying in LA? Um. So well, so the first one's Newport Beach, California. Nice. And then the second one's in LA. Uh, apparently, according to some people from LA, we're staying in a good part of LA because I'm very much aware that there there's are bad some... part. A lot of people have moved out of LA, mm -hmm. like a lot of um, companies, creators, business, like just like high net worth people moved out, one, because of the taxes, mm -hmm. but two, because the whole city, especially through COVID, just kind of went a bit crazy. Yeah, There's a lot of I can imagine. Big, big drug issue, big homeless issues. Downtown LA is not the vibe no. maybe for like a night out but like not to be around why does downtown ring a bell <laughs> that, yeah he's like shit we're staying there I'm kidding no um, it'll be exciting mate i'm looking forward to seeing the con the, and that's a good thing you're going with some like really creative people that you can make some good content yeah with. and they are really cool the, yeah. these people that i'm going with and i'm inspired by them yeah so you know surrounding myself with those people that, for a month can... that's what you've got to do and you can't that's what i like about what you're doing is that you're you're not settling for where you're at now, mm. which you quite easily could do with everything you've achieved. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I suppose it roots back to like my whole life. I've been doing stuff I didn't really want to do. Mm. So now that I've finally given myself the opportunity to mm. pursue what I want to do, why would I want to sit still? Mm. You know, I, and I, I'm really grateful to 
my parents and everything for the way for the way I was brought up. But like, I went to a private school. Did you? Yeah. And my mum was the only working has been the only mm. working person in the family for like the last ten years. So, like, it's come to think of it now that I'm at that sort of maturity level. Mm. Ridiculous. Like, yeah. ridiculously grateful. Yeah. But. I always knew it wasn't what I was meant to be doing. But do you think, like, because this is what I was going to ask, is what's your advice for, because literally this is so crazy to say, but two years ago you were in this situation. You were 18. You were going off to uni. You didn't really, you know, you couldn't make money out of socials yet. What's your advice for another 18-year-old that's maybe into fitness or even into anything like makeup, you know, fashion, whatever, but is starting to build a social media following? and maybe considering do i go to uni or do i make a social media page like have you now th been through uni and thought fuck this like it's just not worth it or would you still advise people to go and test it out everyone should take a gap year everyone should take a gap year and i forgot to mention i took a gap year yeah. so when i went to uni i was 19. right okay. so i was forced to take a gap year because i was the first um year of the covid a levels so i was the f you know right. one day we get told we've got a two-week break from school and next thing i know i never go back yeah. um and i get given grades by some algorithm that yeah, then changed yeah. and this that, and the other i ended up with my grades that i'm happy with but the whole process meant that I wasn't able to go to my first choice of uni, which was, which was London School of Economics. And I'm so, that's like, everything happens for a reason, right? Because I'm so happy I wasn't. That's what you were going to go do? Mm. What were you going to study? Geography. I did not know this. I wouldn't have lasted more than two weeks. <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> and I can say, like, my brother did. And my brother's much more, yeah. like, naturally, academically gifted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still did very well in school. Mm. But... It was a struggle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whereas my brother will happily like go and revise when he needs to. Yeah. Whereas my mum had to put in work to make me revise. <laughs> like it was, it was, it, I was a terrible, terrible academic. What did so, you, I can't remember. What did you do at Loughborough? Geography and sports well. science. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So it was like a weird joint honours. Yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. was like, how does that go together? They did. They did they I don't. was literally basically doing two A-levels. At what point were you like, this isn't for me, this isn't working. Was it like immediate or was it like over <laughs> that space of the first year? I wanted to drop out at Christmas. So literally after wow, the first not, time. Yeah, yeah. I went home, my parents talked me out of it. They were like, just, just give it a go. Which I'm happy they did. I would have been really sad um, to leave everyone straight away. Um, and But from then I always still knew mm. that okay, I'll do this for yeah. two more years, but then after that, I'm done and I'm not, I'm, I'm going to go and pursue what I want to. Mm. So I still knew, like, I didn't really want to be doing it. And then it came to exam revision. I was just going down and downward spiral, mm. like everything, my mental and physical health. Yeah. I'd lost six kilos, like, and considering I was trying to gain body weight and, yeah. you know, I wasn't eating. I was waking up at... 4 p.m. going to bed at 6 a.m. Yeah, it was bad. And one day, when I was revising, my dad texted me. He was like, "Hey, how you doing? I hope you're happier." Like, because we, I kind of hinted, like, oh, you know, I'm not enjoying it. So he texted me. He was like, "Hey, hope hope you're feeling better today." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, all good." Deleted the text. And then sent a paragraph and broke down in the middle of this study. I was, it was like two, it was like late at night, but my dad was still awake. So it must have been around like 10, 11 p.m. But I was alone in this study booth. Mm. The lights were off except the light in the study booth. I really vividly remember it. It's on one of my recent um, TikToks. Yeah. Um, and I just broke down. It was the first time I cried in ages. Shit. And like, I just poured it out to my dad and he instantly replied with all the support in the world that like were they, were they quite supportive after that about dropping out they they were supportive to my face probably questioning behind the scenes but I mean, that's just protective mm -hmm. being a, pa a protective parent yeah um that it's funny like i don't know if i said it on this podcast or another one but i just did a talk at my old school and um talking about like what life's like after uni mm. Well, yeah, after uni or after school, like, should they go to uni, what to do at uni? And I was saying to them, don't let external pressures dictate what your life should be. Mm. So I've got friends that have done jobs, done degrees, mm. because their parents wanted them to do it, or they're, you know, they think that it was going to be a safe option as a job. I've got 
you know, multiple friends that do finance and I'm sure some of them love it, but I know some of them just did it because they wanted to have like a stable yeah. job. So like, I can imagine that some of the reason, I'm not saying all of it, but some of the reason you went to uni wasn't your decision. Like it was, fr it was maybe your decision, but it was from pressures that were external. Right? Yeah. It was from my decision that had been formed from my environment and what, the way I'd been Because the school up. was probably like, yeah. we're going to get more people applying to our school next year. Yeah. We have more people going to university from our A-level group, mm -hmm. which is, I get it, but if fucking mm. school, private schools, because I went to private school, it's a business. Mm. And they're trying to, they're trying to yeah. get as many people into university as possible so they can put, you know, 93% of our students went to a Russell Group University. And I get it. I understand it. I run a business. I know you got to do what you got to do. But equally, it is causing a lot of, I was saying, I was doing some research about when I was writing this speech and it's a bit of a fluffed number because I guess that technically I did business and I run a business now, but I've written in this speech out of my friendship group when we had 18 of us in our friendship group at school, mm. one of them, sorry, 16 of us went to university and one of them is working in a job that directly relates to their degree. Yeah. Crazy. Which means that 60, 15 people chose a degree that had fuck all to do with their future. Yeah. And that's why when I'm asking you about content creators, I, I hate to, I don't sit here and say everyone should be a content creator and they should just fuck off uni. Yeah. But I don't think you should go to uni unless it's for you, mm. unless you actually have a plan. And your plan, by the way, could be, I just want to go socialize for three years. Yeah. I think that's a great way. Yeah. I've got so many friends that had great experiences at uni, wouldn't change it for the world, but aren't working in jobs that relate to their degree. Yeah. But I think it's very toxic to send people to university to do degrees that just are never going to benefit them. I actually rate you a lot for dropping out. And I know that might sound like a weird backwards thing to say to someone, but it, I do rate it a lot yeah. because you could have just stuck at it and not wasted the next two years. But fuck, you wouldn't be, do, uh, face it, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing now. Yeah, if you just uh, absolutely. There's no way. No. You'd be too busy. You'd be pressured of going out. Like, mm. there's no way. Yeah. Well, what I said to my dad is like, I'm going to slowly continue to lose weight, be on an even worse mental downward spiral, mm. end up probably quitting any sort of social media I was doing, mm. and then just be unhappy and probably drop out anyway mm. and have to start from the or bottom fail. again. Yeah. Like you could have failed because yeah. you were hating it. Yeah. And then that's not going to help anyone. Yeah. yeah. And um, another really fun fact is that other than that, my other influence to drop out was Anthony Joshua. So Anthony Joshua was staying in the uh, in my accommodation right. for the whole year to prepare for his I forgot what what fight oh, it was. I remember seeing this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And me and him became like on a first name basis. Like what? he, yeah, because he would go to my gym and stuff. And and one morning, we chatted a few times, and he even offered to give me a little boxing session, which is funny because <laughs> did, I turned up. Did you do it? No, so me and Sam turned up right, and like, understandably. His his agent or manager was just like no, yeah, yeah yeah he'd offered it to us and we said it to him uh, and like he genuinely offered told us the time to come and we just turned up he wasn't there his agent was there and he was just like no there's no way this he is just can't thing. do this right now so I was like mid camp and you fucking knock him <laughs> I was, out I was so sad but like fair enough but one morning after having this chat with my dad mm. um, so I'd already come to my conclusion yeah. I was walking to my lecture and this came up on a Snapchat flashback because yeah. it was around around this time last year that I had yeah, this yeah. whole conversation because um, after it happened I filmed it on Snapchat just to remember what happened mm. I was walking around the hockey pitch and he was he turned the corner but right before he turned the corner I thought to myself I wonder if he walks around this corner because I knew he got, went for a walk around the same time mm. like that I was walking to my lecture. Mm. And he turned the corner and we had a chat about it all. And he was like, bro, you know, you sound on it. You sound like you know what you'd rather do. Why would what? you? How do I not know this story? So Anthony Joshua is the person that ultimately... Anthony Joshua told me to drop out. <laughs> that he didn't tell me directly, mad. but he agreed. He agreed with me. I had no idea. Yeah. Well, no wonder you dropped out. You can't say no to him. I know. He's yeah. huge. Do you know what's crazy though? He also told me that, oh, you could do, you know, your fit fitness coaching. Mm. And this is before I was doing it. And now I'm doing it. And I, so I'd love to see him one day. He probably Mate, won't remember we'll me. We'll clip this up and we'll try and send it to him. Because yeah. that's going to be, yeah. that's a sick story. Yeah. It's, that was before I had 
you know, Gymshark and everything. And my my whole thing with the whole uni and doing something that you don't necessarily want to do is this, is like, go to uni, have fun there, meet as many people as possible, but you, then this is the key thing, you do not need university to do 95% of jobs out there mm-hmm. or have, or especially do something self-employed like you're doing. You don't, you don't need it. You can, the way learning has changed, you can learn so much of youtube so much of google everything's you know there's e-courses online you don't need university Mm. if you want to go and you want to have fun because maybe you don't know what you want to do cool go do it but don't go there searching for things yeah yeah we're trying to make things happen i asked on my instagram story this morning what would you tell Mm. what would be something you'd tell your younger self and one of the people said ready for the podcast no, I, that was, it was, it, it, interestingly, that's actually helped me and given me a few yeah. things to think about. But um, I just wanted to reshare some for mm. some inspiration for other people, yeah, which yeah. I've done. But one of them, which I didn't reshare, was like, university is not worth it. And I don't, I don't, I don't agree fully. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I think everyone should take a gap year, mm. right? Unless you know for a fact what you want to do yeah and you actually want to do it it's not something that's been engraved in your mind since you were a kid if you know what you want to do and it needs a degree Mm. go and do it straight away if you want yeah i still recommend taking a gap year and just living a little because you're probably not going to afterwards you're probably going to go you know if if you're going to be a doctor you've spent five five something years in uni you you want to go straight into work to pay your bills back if you don't know what you want to do the worst thing you can do is go to uni Mm. because I mean, it's exactly what I did. You get locked into something for three or four years that you're not actually wanting to do. Mm-hmm. Just because your school have pretty much told you that's the way to go. I had a forced gap year because I, I applied to do law at mm. university and I didn't get my grades. So I ha- so all my friends were off to university, like every one of them, all they were getting jobs. <laughs> and I hadn't, I hadn't planned what I was going to do. <clears throat> and during that um, gap year, so basically I... I was like, fuck, what am I going to do? My sister was working in Leeds and she was like managing YouTubers. Wow. And I went and stayed with her. Wow. And that's how I got into it. So it's like... That's crazy. It, it's, it's, it, I'm not saying that I wouldn't have been happy if I'd end up being a lawyer. Mm-hmm. One of my best friends actually went to university that year to do the law degree I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. He's now not a lawyer. Okay. He's doing something completely different. But my point being is like, maybe I would have been happy being a lawyer, but maybe I would have been fucking miserable. Yeah. But at the time, I felt like a fucking loser. Like, I felt like I'd failed. All my friends were going off to university. Um, and I was there, like, living on my sister's fucking sofa, literally eating beans, like, because I couldn't afford anything else. Mm. Just working, running errands. But if I hadn't have done that, I never would have met the YouTubers I met. I mm-hmm. never would have done... No, nothing like this would have been here. Mm-hmm. It would have just... I would have been doing something else. So my big thing as well is, like, if you're coming out of school or you're coming out of university or if you're doing anything in life and maybe you feel like you failed, just keep your eyes open for the opportunities out there. Yeah, for sure. Because I can really they're, agree they're with there. that. They're out there. Yeah. You just have to take it. And sometimes mm-hmm. sometimes it's a mindset thing because when you do fail a little bit, your brain turns off all mm-hmm. the time and you go, oh, I, sometimes it's like a you don't deserve anything. Mm-hmm. You sat there going, I don't deserve to be successful. I, I sh- I'm, sh- I'm shit. Yeah. But if you like keep your eyes out there, there'll be something that you can like grasp onto. Yeah. Because I bet when you dropped out, you felt a bit like, oh, fuck. Like, I felt free yeah. instantly. Yeah. And then I felt, oh my God. <laughs> I've actually done it. If I fail at this, I, I know I could go back. Yeah. But that would be terrible. Yeah. And the feeling of knowing that I'd failed and then I had to go back mm-hmm. would mean I enjoy uni even less mm-hmm. if I did have to go back. Think how made, weird it would feel about, yeah. knowing that that was my last option. And I know it wouldn't be my last option. Like there's so many different things you can do mm. and start from the bottom. I had a kid that was on social media, but he kind of like fell off a little bit and he texted me. He was like, what do I do? And I just said, bro, you started from the bottom once, you can do it again. Mm. And yeah. I would just feel... I think the danger of, like, the the kid that you just spoke about, like, how do I get back to where I used to be? The issue that we have right now is we live in a social media age where everything's instant. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people now think that they can be successful overnight. But it's really rare. Mm-hmm. Like, and anything in life takes time. But yeah. we live in this social media thing where it's like, 
this person's doing this and this person's doing really well here and they've got a Lamborghini and they've got a nice house. But people are at different points in their lives and their careers and you can't compare where you're at now to anybody else. Absolutely. And so I can't remember who it was, but I spoke to somebody on this podcast and they were saying that they've basically curated their Instagram page to just be people that inspire them. Because what happens nine times out of ten is you go onto Instagram in the morning or night or whatever and you see what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell, they're doing this. They're working with that brand. Like, you are you know, he can deadlift that. I'm sure you look at mm. people and do that. But it's not inspiring yeah. half the time. It's just comparing yourself to people and making sure that you... I've gone off tangent a bit, but using social media as a positive mm -hmm. to inspire you is what you've got to do. Yeah. And just in life in general, like, don't compare yourself to other people because also life's a marathon man you could be doing really well this year and shit the next year so just because yeah. your friends or people around you are doing well remember if you keep grinding you'll get there as well and you might have a longer stint of being successful yeah it's something i'm struggling with the comparing i bet because that's your industry mm. and i've got all these people in the industry that i follow yeah some of which i hate seeing their content <laughs> not because it's bad content or anything mm. but Instantly, I see their stuff yeah. and I'm comparing, and I would love to unfollow them only for that reason. Like, I do like them as people, yeah, yeah. but I hate, you know, the constant reminder of, oh my God, they've posted a story promoting their code. I need to. Mm. I just hate that. So, I would like comparing yourself is it's a hard one, man. But, but also, part of the reason why you're, you are where you are is because you're a competitive individual, which is really what comparing is yeah. you're trying to be competitive against people I have it all the time with like competitors in our industry where I see what they're doing and I'm like oh, I want to be doing that like I want to be like I don't know opening an office here or like working with that type of talent don't unfollow those people hmm. try and take what you can to be inspired by those people because yeah. that's what why you followed them in the first place yeah. and it's a hard thing to get your brain around and it's not an easy thing because you will always compare yourself but if you can at least take out a Right, I saw they were doing that and it's annoyed me because I want to do it. But you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to go and action something that will get me there. Yeah, I like that. And being inspired by it because yeah. that's what we all are. No, no, Not many people come up with anything original these yeah. days. It's quite hard to come up with anything original. Get inspired by those people you follow instead of unfollowing them. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good case of you can either stop the problem or find a better way of dealing with the problem. Well, you're gonna, you can either hide from the problem or you can yeah. go and action it, right? Yeah. And that's what you'd be doing if you unfollowed them because they'd still be there posting. Yeah. They'd still be there sharing their code. And I suppose it's sometimes good that I have that yeah. level of stress because... It means you care about what you're doing, dude. Mm. If you didn't have stress and you weren't getting stressed out about those side of things, you just didn't, wouldn't care. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're stressed because you're achieving and you're doing well. Last question for you is this. For any creators or fitness related creators out there, what has been your biggest lesson over the last few years that you would give advice to them on to be successful? Be different. Don't chase. Chasing numbers is the worst thing you can do. And I've seen it firsthand myself and with my friends. Yeah. I've seen them try and do the same things that other people are doing to try and chase the same numbers that they're getting and it just doesn't work. Yeah. You have to do what you want to do. Love that dude. Thank you, bro.